Terry Todd. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, Riley. <laughs> Okay, so uh, now let's get serious here. We've yes. got Michael China joining us at the table. We're going to be talking about immigration, right, Michael? And uh, yes. first of all, um, just give us a bit of a, an introdu a bit of a background about yourself, because you're you work with uh, you're you're the is it the president of an organization here in Toronto? Uh, yes. And what's that organization again? Um, the president of the Aboriginal Urban Alliance of Ontario. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we're talking about, uh, and you're from uh, Moose from Factory, right? Moose Factory up in James Bay, yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. I was there in uh, 1970. Were you there in, I don't know, if maybe I ran into you. Uh, I, think I, I think I left in 71. 71. <laughs> yes. There you go. Okay. So um, now let's talk about immigration because you've got uh, a, a concern about immigration policy and immigration in this country, right? Uh, yes, uh, I, I was here a couple of months ago, March or February, I think, and uh, we talked about uh, immigration and refugee issues. Um, the uh, I did, I think I told you about a letter I wrote to the immigration minister mm -hmm. in February 2010 regarding uh, refugee matters. And uh, I want to continue on with this uh, with this issue, finish it off. Um, my my feeling is uh, that if you live in Canada, you should um, live according to the uh, according to the um, the um, or conduct yourself according to Canadian norms right. and uh, values. Uh, I think there's there's just too much uh, people pleasing going on uh, out there in the community. You know? Here, here. Well, it's, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But well, it's uh, it. it's um, it's interesting because um, there's been some big debates about that. There was, I think, uh, a Sikh yes. fellow was uh, in the RCMP and mm -hmm. uh, didn't want to wear the mount he had. Right. He wanted to wear the turban, turban, and that was a big issue. And carry right? a knife. Yep, yeah, carry a knife. So that was allowed. And um, um, there's all kinds of, uh, there's uh, Dan Simmons, uh, a novelist, an American novelist, uh, wrote his, in his latest novel set in the near future, Canada has, of course, uh, succumbed. We're, uh, we're doing Sharia law here mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it's uh, multicultural. Well, there's right. a lot, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of special interest groups that get far too much interest, I think. Well, it's, um, it's interesting. Uh, how it, you have to approach these issues really carefully, though. Absolutely. Especially, well, you know, we should in general. You've sure. you, you got to make sure that you're treating everybody with respect and you're doing it all for the right reasons. But, um, hmm. but when it gets to a point where there was, there was a special interest group, I think there's Pakistani, I can't remember, they wanted to change the lyrics to O Canada. Really? Yes. What did they want to put in there? Uh, they wanted to have a, a one or two lines in their own native language yeah. thrown into O Canada. Well, why not? Sure. We've why? already got it in two languages. Why don't they just rewrite it? Our official it? languages they are want French and English, in, right? Yeah. yeah. But, Who's I mean, stopping anybody from rewriting it in whatever language they want? But you're not going to do that at a baseball game or a hockey game or in school or anything like that, are you? Not unless it's in Brampton. <laughs> <laughs> and carefully we go. <laughs> um, Michael, mm -hmm. did you think that was funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to put some humor into it. But, Michael, you're making a very valid point that I think yep. that we are coming to a point where we're giving too much interest to special interest groups and considering things and changing what the real identity of what being a Canadian is. Mm -hmm. And you're a First Nations human being, and yes. what does that mean to you to be Canadian? Well, to me, uh, being Canadian, for most Canadians, uh, being Canadian is to, is to be born here. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so, and yet we are opening the doors to people to come here. Yes. And they become Canadian citizens, and then I think it's okay. I think it's okay for us to say, okay, those guys are Canadian too, right? Yeah. But let's, yeah, I think you really have to start and say, okay, look, you're welcome to come here, 
and these are the rules. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what happens when people from other countries move to uh, you know Canada or the United States, North America, let's say it. They collect in communities mm -hmm. and live the same way they did from their homeland. And they speak la the same language, yeah. they have the same you know, yeah. food, the same interests, things like that. The same clothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. True. So there is not much of a blending other than I've left maybe an oppressive state where I used to live. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in a Canada, which is mm -hmm. you know around the world known as a free thinking society and, and, uh, yeah. and, and place. But mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a real danger. And we're just having a conversation yes. here, Michael. And don't, you know, if you want to make sure you're getting some some of your points across, please do. Yes. But um, I think there's a real danger, because it used to be, I think, that there was a lot more opportunity in the country for everybody, right? And yep. we needed people to come here and settle the West, build the railroads, Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. But now people come here, and I think uh, a lot of times they're finding it difficult to find a job. Yeah. How do you participate in mainstream culture if you, if you can't participate economically, if you're on social assistance? And right. I think there's a real danger when we see uh, ethnic ghettos developing mm -hmm. where a lot of the people aren't gainfully employed. Mm -hmm. And then they start to resent this new country that they've chosen because this new country ain't doing much for them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, I mean, um, I think part of the solution is that we have to really get the economy working again, N not, not mm -hmm. just for new Canadians, but for all Canadians because I think mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's really difficult. I mean, yeah. you're the pre uh, president of the uh, Aboriginal Urban Alliance. Yes. How are you seeing the economy working on behalf of your constituents, Michael? Well, in First Nations, uh, well, the urban First Nations people, uh, we have uh, we've, we've gone into, uh, some of them um, have gone to law school or they've gone into business and uh, they've started their own uh, small business. Some, some of our First Nations people are in, in small business. But even then, uh, it's no license to make a lot of money. Opening a, oh, a, 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 a small business is, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, very difficult. Yeah, and, it uh, is. Yeah. Often, if you're lucky, it, it it may take years to to get up to that stage. Make profits where, that are. Yeah, you're absolutely you're, right. You're, yeah, sure. It is. Earning yeah. a decent living. So. Yeah, you're competing with other uh, other businesses. And, yeah. Uh, also, a big business too. Yeah. 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 Um, now I heard. Now, Stu, you were saying before we came on that uh, the immigration numbers are going down. Yes. Yeah, they say that they're down by about five to ten percent right now. Now I've heard, and I don't know, Michael, if if I've heard that despite the official figures, that the real figures. Now I don't know if this is substantiated or not. Are like the real figures are way higher than mm -hmm. the official. I think the official is around three hundred thousand mm -hmm. new people coming into the country well, every year. Yeah, that's what the rate is. And that's what they're like trying that to hit. That, that's what it's been like for the last few years. But I've heard a statistic that really we're about 800,000 people are coming into this country every year. Is that documented or are you I don't right? know. Do you know about that, Michael? Well, the last the last time I read uh, the media reports was something like 267,000. Yeah, so it's down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It is down. Yeah. yeah. But again, and, and you, I think you make a valid point as to what are, what is the real real number? You yeah, know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, and they. T it seems to me what gets me is that, uh, I mean, it's a difficult to topic to yeah, talk about, it and is. we're being very careful here. Well, not that careful. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're being a little. We're being respectful because we really do understand. I think we do understand the delicacy yeah. or how delicate this, the, yeah. the, the the issue is. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me every time this comes up for debate in Ottawa, mm -hmm. everybody. No matter what party is uh, all about, it's not about, f you know, it's how much should we increase the immigration quotas right. this year. And the debate is how much should we increase it. And, it, uh, and in the light of things like 9-11, it's yeah. like, gee, wouldn't you want to be a little more careful rather than let's try to streamline the process a little bit? Um, and yet it doesn't. And so uh, to me, I'm going, what, what's the real agenda going on? This is my paranoid thing, but what's the real mm -hmm. agenda? And my paranoia is, is that really the agenda might be to, to destabilize the country. Because if we have, like, divide and conquer, mm -hmm. if we're all a bunch of uh, separate ethnic groups fighting with one another, then, you know, then how can we as, as a country get together 
and stand up for, you know, for democracy and for all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michael? Yeah. Well, there's another issue I'd like to bring up, and that's um, uh, related to the Punjabi community. It's about, uh, it's called, uh, they call it honor killings. No, God. But in Canada, we call it murder. So uh, the law starts. Yeah. Kind the rest of, of the world, I call <laughs> yeah. it murder. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you know, our laws are different from the, from India or Pakistan. So mm -hmm. if you live in Canada, you know, you have to live under Canadian law. Every, everybody is under Canadian law. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can do a better job of, of saying, like saying, you know, when you're coming to the country, this is what your this is what you can expect. Right. Y y you're welcome to come. You don't have to come. If you don't like how it works, you mm -hmm. know, then you don't have to come. But if you are, but this is how it works, you're welcome to come and, and welcome. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But what are these honor killings exactly that you're talking about? Uh, it has, I believe it has something to do with marriage or it's a marriage uh, issue, I think, uh, where somebody uh, selects a partner and they, uh, you know, it's uh, in Canada. Uh, you have to know that person before you marry them. Before you marry them, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, well, date them for a couple of years or whatever. But uh, in in uh, Pakistan or India, they uh, they have a different uh, the uh, I don't know what they call it. They call it um, arranged marriages. I think they call them. Yeah. Well, I think it's still okay to have an arranged marriage. Hmm. Well, yeah, and and again, I mean that. Uh, but arranged I mean, marriages were built on. Economical reasons for more than anything else. Uh, a lot of the the honor killings that you're speaking of, Michael. I mean, you you could. Uh, uh, I, I read once about an, an incident where a young woman was murdered by her brother because she was raped, mm -hmm. and she brought the rape upon herself, which dishonored the family. So, the father, I think, had passed away, so it came down to him as the firstborn in the male to deal with it. And the answer is to kill his sister, mm -hmm. which is barbaric. Yeah. It's, uh, there's a lot of religious uh, overtones that go along with that, which, you know, um, but yeah, I don't think that the law courts or any systems in Canada should have to deal with what is perceived on the other end as, well, it's an honor killing. She did mm -hmm. and in our country. This is, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think we should have to spend mo a lot of money in Canada defending that the type law. of, the, yeah, no, that, the, that law. Law, mm -hmm. right? the, the law, the law is the law. Yeah. But again, you know, it's not known as an honor killing it's like you said it's it's called murder yeah so mm -hmm. you will be tried as a murderer not as somebody defending the rights of your family well yeah. I think this goes again to the that we're not doing the, the, the proper job of managing the expectations of, of, of people the, who are coming to this yeah, country yeah, yeah, exactly. we have to explain that in advance this well, is I what think you can explain that and somebody can nod and say I understand <laughs> and then go do whatever they want the mandate has to come after you do something stupid like that mm -hmm. and that they're not going to be pussyfooting around it. We're not giving you special treatment and there won't be a board put together to, you know, review what you've done. What you've done is wrong and we call it, like you say, Michael, it's murder. So, mm -hmm. But I think part of the, I mean, I remember other stories where um, a, f a family, I don't know what, maybe they were a Muslim family, I'm mm -hmm. not sure, sure, where the daughter was, you know, the parents were from the old country right. and the daughter grew up in our... As a first hedonistic liberal yes. education system, right. right, and and became a kind of a wild Canadian rebellious. teenager, yeah, a right? normal, yeah, rebellious. And but of, but but it was such a shock to the family that it was that the I think she got the father, the father, her. yeah, I do remember that case yeah. about five years ago, yeah. and it was it's a horrible story, but um, uh, you know we have to, I mean, this is something that that people their kids are going to be Canadian. That's right. Yeah. And they they have to understand that that's right. going to maybe mean that things are going to happen that wouldn't happen if they didn't come here. Absolutely. And uh, you have to deal with it. Well, it's a clash of cultures, which is, you know, like you say, uh, is there, so do we have to re-educate? Do we have to put a system in place for... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mike, Michael, what do you think? What is there a solution to this? Or what, do you, what are you thinking is a a way to, to approach this? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult uh, 
it's a difficult uh, issue. Um, I think uh, you know, like the the more the more time uh, people spend in Canada, the more the more they realize how 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 Canadian culture, um, uh, you know, um, works and. Uh, and there's, I guess there's um, that mentality. It's a mentality issue, mm -hmm. and wherever wherever they come from or, or background, cultural background. Yeah. I think it's sad too when, uh, or I don't like it when I when I hear um, people who are new new Canadians and they start to uh, speak poorly of Canada and Canadians and Canadian mm -hmm. culture. That's mm -hmm. one thing I don't like to see either. Yeah. Yeah. But I think uh, it's understandable in some cases when they, they find in there, because oftentimes, and I hear this mm -hmm. from, yeah, from so new Canadians, yep. that they are, when they see the immigration people, they're promised, oh, you're going to have, there's all this opportunity right. and you're going to be able to do this and that. And then they come here and they find out that it's really not so, it's not that easy. It's not that great. The economy's not doing that mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And it, people are finding it difficult. So you can understand they've sort of been given false promises. Maybe, to some extent. Well, yeah, you know, and, and I think anybody, you know, looking from the outside in, and you hear about, you know, what a wonderful country and all the rights and uh, the, the, the democracy and uh, the beautiful landscape that you can buy into your own little fantasy of what life will be like there, and then you're right. Then you get it built up from either immigration or people that you know here who have grown up here and find it a lot easier because they are Canadians, mm -hmm. which, you know, you're going to be treated a little differently if you know the culture, the background, you've lived here for a long time, you speak the language properly, you know, and you can get through life a little easier. But you come to like Montreal, Vancouver or Toronto, the three most expensive places to live in Canada, and you're right. I mean, you're not going to feed a family working at McDonald's or driving a cab or still many people do it. And you're right. They find that life's a lot harder than perhaps where they used to be, which maybe they were getting political uh, pressures or religious pressures or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But the economy mm -hmm. here is not as, well, I think like you said, Hugh, it's not as, as, as easy as most people think that it's just the land of milk and honey and opportunity here. Mm -hmm. It's getting harder and harder for people like me who, you know, I'm second, third generation Canadian, you know, and uh, it's, it's, you know, and I'm an entrepreneur. I run my own business as well, and it's getting harder every year. The margins are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Who's to blame? Again, we're, we're still working that on that. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the show. Michael, who do you think's to blame? Uh, who or what? What is to blame? Can we say who or is it more of a what? What uh, is to actually blame for the downturn in the economy? And yeah, I think. Well, let's face it, it's Harper. Well, I think we're <laughs> paying too much taxes, maybe. Well, yeah, we're paying <laughs> taxes. <laughs> <about. There's> the, <laughs> well, yeah. you know what? As a business yeah. owner, trust yeah. me. I, but that's all going to the bankers. It's the <laughs> bankers. <laughs> well, no, I, yeah, absolutely. No, it is the bankers. Uh, well, you know, it's the whole funny. monetary system. I was watching, I think it was 60 Minutes last night, and they were talking to a professional gambler down there who runs his own, basically. I mean, he said, you know what? I've dealt with guys that carry guns and play cards and stuff. The only guys I've ever been screwed around by are finance companies, bankers. He says, I've gone broke three times, and every single time it's been at the hands of big money management. Mm -hmm. banking, investments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're right. Those guys are criminals, and they've proven it. Look what happened to the states. I mean, and it's happening in Canada right now, too. Yeah. Thank Michael, you, <laughs> anything else you want to... Uh, I think we've... I know we've sort of yeah. run off at the mouth uh, here, but yes. so yeah. you, you got some notes, or I want to make sure yeah, you make Just a couple of issues. Yeah. So one is our Canadian borders need to be beefed up. Uh, I think that's another issue. Uh, you know, we have safety issue. Um, True. And uh, the last issue I would like to talk about is the, the uh, refugee board appointees who hold $100,000 sinecures, $100,000 jobs. And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, incredibly uh, a lot of money for... Uh, who's, for it, who's, who's running the, like, the refugee board well, the appointees? I, I, heard, I heard some of these people were liberal appointees. 
Well, sure. Yeah. Well, those will all be replaced. They'll be conservative appointees, making <laughs> ninety thousand dollars a year <laughs> and still running the same gamut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's a good point too. I mean, we hear about uh, these. Uh, in fact, we're even talking about it now that the new job creation that's happening in the country mm -hmm. is at very low wages, yeah. Yeah. and that the you know, and it's we're not seeing a lot of growth in the government sector, where, where the good pl the good jobs are with the good money. And the but good don't benefits forget, and everything else, right? Where's that money coming from? That's all tax dollars from going to pay the private people sector. that are working in the government sector. Right. You're taking money out of the private, private sector. Yeah, that's right. You're putting it government. into the yeah. government sector. To now, mismanage it. I remember in the good old days mm -hmm. when the Conservative Party or the Progressive Conservative Party were all about not letting that happen. Right. You know, all about supporting the private sector. Right. Right? And not letting the government sector run away. Well, we're seeing now in the U.S. under the Republican mm -hmm. and in Canada under the Conservatives that they're, they're forgetting about all those traditional small c conservative values and they're just it's and what we're seeing is the economy increasingly to me is rewarding the wrong behavior it's mm -hmm. rewarding people that aren't really productive and people who want to be productive can't be productive because the private sector is falling apart there's not enough liquidity in the free marketplace to allow entrepreneurs to thrive to allow businesses to thrive and who are getting killed yeah. with taxes yeah. Absolutely. Too many people on the government payroll not really contributing in equivalent to the amount of money that they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael, anything else you want to? Yeah, well, I saw the uh, Toronto Sun last week. I think it was last weekend. They were uh, they were looking for 20,000 th 20, uh, 20, people who were failed refugees, uh, illegal illegal aliens, and uh, these people are, these people are on the lam. And for years 20,000 year. people yeah. who they've lost track of yeah. in the country? Yeah. <coughs> and uh, these people are on the lam, and uh, the, some of them are, are field refugee claimants, mm -hmm. and um, some of them are here illegally. And so, uh, that again, you know, the border issue, that, that needs to be, um, uh, we, we have to deal with our border issue uh, uh, federally, uh, you know, Ottawa has to uh, has to be more um, has to do more uh, as no. far as the borders go. I thought they were going to get rid of the border because now it's part of the security <laughs> perimeter with the United States, and of course, you know, then we can just rely on Homeland Security. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that big fence because they know what they're doing. Texas, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> you know how easy it is to. To what? To get past immigration or to fake an ID or to, you know, I mean, how many times do you hear in the paper about, you know, mm -hmm. somebody gets shot by somebody who was deported two years ago. <laughs> yeah. They're back in the city killing people. So, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, 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 there's no easy answer. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, like I say, I make a joke about this tiny little blue marble that we live on with a yeah. finite land space. And we are procreating at a rate that is way beyond what this planet can handle. Mm -hmm. Where are these people going to go? Yeah. Where well, if the we pole going? shifts, then Antarctica will become a temperate <laughs> continent. <laughs> Stu, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll live. It's got some interesting geography down there. Hudson's Bay, your new travel destination. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Michael, any final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are, you know, we need, I think the Canadian public needs to have more community forums, uh, letter writing campaigns, that kind of thing out there, you know, to address these issues. And that's my final my final comment. It's uh, it's uh, it, it global, sounds like it would global. be nice, but it's it's mm -hmm. like people are so busy, yeah. you don't yeah. have time to even think about public participation and debate, and the system yeah. doesn't really allow for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Sometimes I get a little discouraged. Well, it's a little yeah. There's a lot of apathy out there with all the uh, <sighs> red tape. Yeah. 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 Michael, do you want to give out any contact information if uh, people want to reach you or anything like that, or for the Aboriginal uh, Urban Alliance? Yeah. Yeah, I have an email. I have a phone number, um, 647-344-5100 is my number in Toronto. Is that for the organization? Or? Yeah, for the organization, yeah. 647? Yeah. 344-5100. Four, four, okay. Yep. All right, Michael, thank you for coming in and doing this today with us. Thank you. Okay. Well, Stu, we're going to take a little summer shake break. 
That's right. I said a summer shake, shake break. break. You did, sir. I heard <laughs> you It's time that. for a shake it's break. Like for summer shake break. Um, it's the, today is a Pear Berry Delight Day. Down here at the channel. Down here at the channel. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get a couple of these uh, Pear Berry Delights. We're going to learn how to make them right now. This is from, because. You're not kidding me, are you? I'm not kidding. <laughs> Look at the Black and Decker. They've got these new diecast. Are they sponsoring the show now? Fantastic. Sponsor uh, Blenders. Yes, they're sponsoring the show. Beautiful. And we're gonna find out how to make these uh, pear berry delights right now.